Good evening, everyone. We call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, September 28th, 2023, to order. Time is now 7.04 p.m. I ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States As always, the meetings are being recorded for audio and video. We prefer to mute them. Have them the same. And uh, for those in the front of the here, I'd ask that you make sure your microphone is towards you and relatively close to have the right space, but uh, closer is better. Uh, and for everybody that will be making a comment, please, or the same rule, put your microphone towards your face. Clearly state your name. And address. Uh, first item is to approve the minutes of the August 26, 2020 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Next is to approve the minutes of the August 31st Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Yeah. Okay, the minutes for the September 23rd, 2023 workshop meeting have not been completed yet, so we'll table the next board of supervisors meeting. Uh, Irene, do you have anything that you'd like to mention on the treasurer's report? Yeah, thank you. HWA audit, uh, I don't know if it's audit or not, um, you know, mm -hmm. how much fun we've had that in years past. Well, this year, Colton was getting transferred to the audit, and it didn't come into the office full. Do and I was at work, and I had tried numerous times to um, uh, access and get the password, but so it was not. And I apologize. Uh, in prior years, it meant about a little over five hundred dollars, so it was not completed for this year. Uh, the only other thing to add, if everyone takes or if anyone takes a look at the bill, uh, you'll see that there's a couple of uh, large bills for Monarch products. But let everyone know the culvert costs haven't coming out of yeah. general funds. Uh, I have yet to get over to the bank to actually transfer funds from savings into our uh, checking account, but we have we have enough we have more than sufficient funds to uh, do that. Plus, we've been getting quite a bit of interest in our money market account, so mm -hmm. um, I'll get there. Uh, have to speak to Pam about some other issues, but uh, that's about it. I, I guys are missing out on that FHWA audit and, and potentially some money there, um, but I had been trying actually for about maybe three weeks. Get the password and it didn't come through. So, yeah. Sometimes I know we had that happen one year with the um the underground tank thing, where like your password reset system just wouldn't yeah. pass. So it, it, it happens. You got it done now. Though, yeah. Right? No, 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 no. It was I didn't file. Well, I, I mean, you can file it late. File it late. Yeah. 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 It's better, better, better late, better than, late than never. Than never. Yeah. Yeah. There's not like a penalty or anything like yeah. that. They just... I mean, they simplify the system here, so. All right, that's okay. all I have. Okay, in that case, I'll move on to the next item, which is the approving the payment of bills for September 2023. I'll make a motion to approve. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay. At this time, I'll open the floor to public comments. Anybody wishing to make a comment, step up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. And if you haven't signed the sheet in front, please sign the sheet. Hello, David Randler. Uh, what do you want address? 451 West 10th Avenue, Robinsonia. Um, I'm here to talk about the PH Schmaltz Road. It's on, it's on the agenda, yes. Um, I'm here uh, myself, Mr. Robinson is here with a neighbor. Um, we've come to an agreement to. Uh, to sell the property, uh, we'd like to buy it. We were negotiating back and forth for the past month. Uh, I know we are in violation for a demolition. Um, he would like to buy it and uh, in a different style, do something different than what I was proposing to do. 
So that's why I'm coming here tonight to discuss that. Um, I to talk to um, the attorney, um, Mr. Farman, about that. Um, so I want to get the board's uh, opinion of that. I did talk to Kraft about that with the demolition permit. That would be transferable. They said yes, that would be an issue. Uh, we can do that. Um, we just have to um, agree with um, Mr. Sadison when when he's going to do it, and how he's going to do it, um, and uh, get the board's blessing to do so. I just I just have a couple. Ireland, what's his name? What's that? David Sadison, three nine nine three Smalls Road. Hi, Mr. Sadison. I just want to ask you a couple questions so the board can make a decision. Do you understand that if you purchase this property from Mr. Rattler, you will be responsible for complying with the demolition order? I do. Is it your intention to remove that structure from the property? It is. Yeah, yeah no one has motivation to take it down. I've lived there. Do you understand that you don't take township to do so? I understand. How long do you think you need to take down the structure if you buy it? Uh, I would be looking at taking it down within 30 days. When do you expect to close on this transaction? Uh, at no later than October 10th. Do you have an agreement already? It's not signed, but it's wrong. Yeah, I'm going to review it here, you know, tonight. And would, would you also be willing to put something in writing acknowledging that you're going to have the responsibility to put the structure down once you own it? Yes. In, in that case, I don't want to have you by 60 days. Contingent upon the mission of an agreement of sale and David acknowledging his Thank you. Have we submitting other permit? Proposal is different than Mr. Rattler's. Yeah, that's okay. that's down the road yet, but it, and you'll, you'll obviously agree to pay those fees and some litigation. Okay. And calling that permit, that building permit out again. And I picked it up. I paid for the tuition permit and right. got that, and I paid the engineering fees that were due. Up the other that I, I talked to about that, that I didn't. Well, so, so to the extent that the township incurred the fees, you can pay them. Um, what would be? It talked about that, but you never know, if, if we do have outstanding, I would make the yeah, yeah, I, I would want to. Craft because the, the initial application will cover most, if not all of it, depending on the complexity of it. There could be additional things that Craft would then be paid for at the end of the process. Close out. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. It's they have. Look, look at it this way: you're not actually building anything, and building permits are usually based on the value of the improvement. So it would just be the time and effort they had to go. Through. Or do the initial review. There's no subsequent inspection requirement or anything. So I wouldn't imagine it's terribly a large sum of money, but there might be something beyond the initial sixty dollars. The mission of the sale, a written statement by prospective buyer, 
and payment of any outstanding for the permit. So to and those things would have to would have to happen. Yeah. Pay, 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 payment of review fees that are reasonable. I mean, so we can we can we can make this motion, and I mean, we're. But, uh, uh, Mr. Randall, I'm trying. I'm trying to help you. I, yeah. I, 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 I am. I am willing to put the qualifier that reasonable. You must. You must pay the fees if they're reasonable. Okay. Okay. Can I clarify that the demo? be transferable okay so I, I think i have enough notes here colin if i i missed up please chime in and correct me i'll make a motion to authorize the extension of the demolition permit on state small road 60 days under the contingents of a provided agreement of sale a from the prospective buyer uh, acknowledging liability for the demolition property and the payment of Outstanding uh, building permit fees at the full level by Mr. Randler, as long as those things are satisfied. Thank you. Um, but if you have any injuries of Yeah, I I am aware. Uh, I was kind of the fact of zoning because uh, I don't feel there. So if if a new structure. Contained to the footprint, it even if it was moved, it would, it could still not. Yeah, so it could be exempt from water. If it's kept the same size, I don't think I want to buy it. There's no drive. Yeah. Well, the my my thought was, and my research was actually in the possibly a reverse subdivision with my property. So, there, there is a driveway. Better. And yeah, I I don't want a driveway closer to the turn because it's already hard to see. So then the existing and if that permit. That's yeah. I, when I had talked, maybe it was I don't know. I talked to someone, and I, 
uh, well, whoever I talk to, that's what they Okay, so before we move into the next public comment, if we have one, uh, one of the people on Zoom was saying they're having a hard time. Uh, Brandon, are you able to hear me loud and clear? Okay, fantastic. I'll keep an eye on the chat. If you notice anything else, please let me know, and I'll make any spot adjustments that we need throughout the course of the evening. Um, Chuck, if you could, could you move your mic closer to you? That might be one of the... Thank you. Um, okay, do we have any other public comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into the main items for the agenda. First item on the agenda is the healthy process. Steve Dronick had come out on the workshop meeting uh, requesting aid of Marion Township. Yeah, who? Pardon me. Um, uh, aid of Marion Township, uh, as their, some of their equipment, mainly their tasers, have become outdated and have become a, a safety concern. Uh, They'd like our help in obtaining some new ones. There was a quote for $22,999.27. We can finance out over the course of five years. Uh, this was four tasers. All cartridges in the five year time frame would be included. Uh, and we're also actively seeking grant. To, to so I think this is a thing where we best practice and best effort to service in our community. We should do it. And we should have the, uh, the local service grant to help pay for that. Um, so does that mean we help you? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, and I can't do it before I speak. I've had a conversation with the fire chief about speaking to the Hawkins Township the police officers that have a pregnancy and apparently they got stole giving three thousand dollars to that um and so i know it just went to conversations didn't go for approval and also um last year we had had a twenty five hundred dollar donation so i ask that we would consider in addition to the um the uh teaser that we would consider a to the police department of $5,500 uh, outright to help with the cost of the MBT that we we'll be into it, as well as $25,000, which we did last year uh, as a result of increased cost of gas prices, et cetera. Um, it, 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 just, it just troubles me that, that they have to struggle to get these permits and, and the financing that they need for their daily operation, and uh, they just do such a wonderful job. So, just an important yeah. note to highlight with the uh, the MDTs. That's something that is not the whole cost. It's a fifty no. fifty yeah. Yeah. between us and Paul yeah. Hawk and yeah. two municipalities. Yeah. Okay. How are these? Needed? They're they're purchasing. They're they're. Um, it's not us buying it and giving it to them. This is them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that something? No. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it, that should be a non-issue because it's the yep. painting that stuff through their normal process. They're just asking for it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, so I guess we're going to do one. Do we need to amend the agenda to make? Motion around that. Uh, no, for no. the uh, yeah, the sure. MDT it's and the other. I mean, it's yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Irene, do you want to make a motion on the agenda? Okay. And the agenda a donation to the Club Pocket Police at the amount of five hundred for additional fuel costs. Uh, no, just lump it together. Okay, as well as three thousand dollars. For the mobile data terminals MD2 for a total of $5,500. Well, hold on. We got to do. 
We're amending the agenda, but you got to do that. Was so we got to do the roll call. Jim, second. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the item that was added for. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Aye. As a serious side note, do you want to make Omaha about becoming Omaha Mary Township Police Department? It's not a bad idea in my mind, but it's I'm taking a conversation with the with the chief and uh, you know see what more we could what more we could collaborate with. I mean I um, just a matter of, of, of good communication and seeing just like what we wanted to hear, we want to know what our needs are and anticipate future needs as the state of care, you know, what they need immediately and anticipating future needs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. Item on the agenda is the Act 527. Last month's meeting, we made a motion to approve and submit the new milestone and compliance schedule to the PAP. Motion was made to authorize Hydroterra as well as the special study using the low pressure sewer design. Uh, the intermunicipal agreement is still currently under review by the WSA. Alan, I don't know if you, Andy, have heard anything about that or just kind of in motion with them. Time to go into the motion. Okay. I suspect they don't. This is not. Nope. Their perspective. Fire reserve capacity for a project. Mm -hmm. project. Yeah. Well, I think on, for one good, bad, or or another. We pretty much to, to entertain this like it's it's happened. So whether it's low pressure, gravity, whatever, whether it's five years down the road, eight years down the road, whatever, we're gonna have to capacity. So I'll touch on that in a second. So uh, curious what their hesitation is on that, but yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. So for some of the faces in the audience, the 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 thing that we're navigating is as you probably well understand historically, we are under order from the DEP. We have to go through certain milestones and things like that, otherwise we can be fined three hundred dollars a day as a minimum. With that said, we are gonna comply with the things that we are regulated and required by state law to do, but when the point of Putting this in, if we don't have sufficient funding to put it in, in terms of grants to make this an actual feasible opportunity, we won't do it. We are we're going to dig in our heels, and we have to lawyer up. We have to lawyer. Up. But we don't have anything really at our disposal in terms of say like, oh, just pull the plan back. If we pull the plan back, that is immediately going to get us sued. Clients, we've actually already been threatened at least one fines from the department. The last meeting. Tim Wagner made it very clear. See, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We're still clear. So we're still going to fight the fight in terms of viability, but I think at this point we have a situation where we have to play the game by the game. It's based on what is the board. The board knows it, but. Basically, exists the world of the state subject to this plan. We don't have 
ground. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of the we had to previously, i.e. the grandfather clause and et cetera, there have been other court cases that have struck that down. There's precedent for that not being a reasonable reason public sewer. So we're we're doing everything we can to make this uh, a situation where we are defensible if we have to go the route of litigation at some point and going down the avenue of making sure this is affordable, that if it if it can't be afforded, we can't do it. To that end, uh, Irene, it was you that met with them, correct? No, no, it was Jim, thank you. Um, Jim has met with uh, our Senator Gephardt. Uh, I met with Representative Barry Joswiak, and I'm gonna be finishing drafting a letter to our county commissioners to try to get every avenue out there of finding grant funding. And if we put all of our feelers out there, we make all the applications, get enough money then we simply say like yeah we, we want to comply we've demonstrated good faith of complying with this we can't and i, I think that is a, obviously not a, a, an iron flag but if we take that to court it demonstrates again good faith that we're trying we're not going to willingly do something that is going to create a ghost town in stouchburg or, or bankrupt people or the township. but on that same turn if we can get 80 or 90 percent grant funding and it's a very low cost to do this then kind of have to roll with it. You know, there will be uh, a town hall. We're actually going to have a, a gathering of people early November. And we're going to be putting out conceivably the Conrad White request. Yeah, it's one of the agenda items. Uh, but the goal here is to try to get everybody together that is interested. I know there's a lot of people that it's a hot topic that we can explain kind of where we are, how we got here, the, the current situation, both from a, a financial and a, a regulatory standpoint. And we're going to have the, the SEOs, both we're going to have uh, Chuck there, as well as the representative Hydra Terra, to kind of explain what the dynamic is and why we have to kind of navigate this in the way that we're navigating. So the goal here is to get the word out there, get the understanding out there, let everybody know, while we objectively may not be in favor of it, we have to do certain things to make sure the relationship stays safe and stays solid. Uh, when I came on the board, it was five million. And well, it's actually, Jim, before, Jim, before this, it's, it's, and, yeah, so not including, it, yeah, yeah. And before this is accomplished, it's surprising. Well, I hope I hope you plan to live a long time, Loretta. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. well, it's well, yeah, because, because it's been pushed off and pushed off and pushed yeah. off, and things don't come back, yeah. and we have no choice but to deal with this. Yeah. So we are the board that's saying, okay, we're, we're we're taking the necessary steps that you're asking us to take to to move forward with this. When we get the answer, the answer, that's that, and then we'll know exactly what we have to do. But there have been cases in Robeson Township where they force them to put it in. Despite the excessive, you know, to that end, we're, yeah. like I said, we're going to navigate this the best we possibly can. We're going to go after grants when the time comes. We have to say no. You have my assurance that while I'm sitting on the board, and I can't speak for Sue or Jim, but if it's a situation where we don't have enough grant funding and we can't afford it, I'm I'm not going to sign off on it. The, I don't want to invite a lawsuit, but it's better than the alternative. Rather take my chances. Yeah. yeah. Certain sums that, you know. For what it's know. worth, everybody that we have talked to so far, Representative Joswiak agreed with that, that he was like, that's an awfully big price tag for such a small amount of people. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's why we're concerned. And that's that's yeah. that's the that's the that's the thinking is we'll chase LSA grants at the, the local state level, we'll go after any federal grants that we possibly can, we'll go after Clean Water or whatever the other one is. Um, go, going greener. Thank you, the H, H2 Water, H2 Water Water. They, they understand yeah. the situation that we're in. They yeah. understand the history now going through a lot of the, the stuff to prep it, and they also understand kind of our rationale.
board members around, we have to make this work or we have to be prepared to dig in and fight about it. They are, we are, they're a wastewater engineer that we, we brought on specifically to handle these tasks. Because Chuck is a tax. Chuck, I know wastewater is Well, I know you kind of, yeah. you do SEMs. We actually yeah. we brought on Hydropera before we got but the bottom line is they do a marvelous job and it's it's their sole focus. That's that's their whole lot in life, is that's what they do. So okay. Um I don't think I have anything to add to that other than I need to you didn't finish the rest. Did I? Uh, oh, oh the geotechnical oh, yeah, thank you. The, um, we had some surveying done. Some people may have seen a lot of the side of the road, like that. Um, the geotechnical survey found that there's bedrock in most places along the path, starting at about three feet. So the traditional gravity sewer that was originally spec'd in the plan tack on another $2.5 to $3 million worth of rock excavation for that. So that, uh, that $10 million cost Jim just mentioned is actually closer to 12 and a half or 13 if you go the traditional gravity fed soil, which is why we have Hydropera to prep that special study around low pressure. Low pressure being, um, put it bluntly, not quite in the ground, requires less excavation and you actually don't have to deal with bedrock in most times. So the price tag that we would be going after to try to fund via grants is closer to the five or six million dollar mark. Originally, when you go back about ten years, so we're we're trying to think outside of the box on this in every possible avenue that we can to to make this un unfortunately unpleasant situation tenable. That we don't have a situation where it's you know, again just to go back to the prior statement, bankrupt anybody in the town or in the region. So, yes, sir. There are two hundred and thirty views. Yeah, so there are a couple of properties. The original, well, well, it hasn't been bid out yet. This is a, a a design of this is what the anticipated cost is. The anticipated cost adjusted for 2021 dollars for the gravity was $10 billion. And then based on the results of surveying, there was uh, 8,000 cubic yards of bedrock that would have to be removed, which adds another $2.5 to $3 million on the cost of that particular project. Um, that's why we kind of made the the adjustment and authorized the, the wastewater engineers to go down the route of low pressure sewer, which is by nature a, a an easier insulation because the the pipe only has to go down I think maximum five to six feet, and you have um, a lot less concerns about things because of it being under pressure. You don't have the usual uh, I and I issues that you have gravity bed sewer. There'll still be some issues. Well, it'll be but much much. Less. Yeah, because I think down by very end of Canal Road, towards where Shady Cabin is, that section of pipe I think is more than twenty feet deep to keep it on on grade for draining properly. So if you figure you have to go through basically 15, 16 feet of bedrock, that becomes an expensive process. You either have somebody out there with a jackhammer, or you start using dynamo. So, uh, yes. So you, there's a, a complex situation of things here. So second class township code prevents or prohibits the cost of an infrastructure project like this being spread out across the entirety of a township or a municipality. It has to be assessed to the area that receives the benefit of said improvement. The downstream of that though is if the township takes out huge amounts of debts, the township is still required to pay for it. So you could have a situation Township becomes insolvent, debt taken out for that infrastructure. So it is something that we have to be conscious of and make sure that we're not fighting off more than we can chew as a municipality. Yes, sir. Put it. 
actually, I, I want everybody to be, be able to hear this, even people on the Zoom. Could I ask you to approach the podium? Oh, sir, to, to the microphone. Th thank you. Yeah, I worked on some uh, sewer projects for about 15 years in in uh, Schuylkill County and also some low pressure uh, projects, uh, Lake Auto, Aqua. And uh, if I can be of any assistance to the board, uh, I'd, try, I'd like to actually look at the gravity layout if, if I could. Uh, I know that you're, you guys are 40 years down the road here. Anything I can do to help uh, help you out. But uh, my, my sense is uh, if you drive through Gerardville, Pennsylvania, and you look at those houses up there, uh, you would think, wow, this baby is not affordable, you know? And actually, they have a treatment plant. Uh, they, um, I think they're running through here. And a lot of activation in the beginning. Happy residents. The project is successful. They have 430 hookups, I believe. But they had a treatment plant. I did a job in Butler Township. It's the same, uh, the same scenario. The uh, homeowners up there and the median income don't go back, but uh, my perspective is the median incomes up there are less than. From my perspective, you, you don't have to treat it. Uh, it should be, we should be able to do this project somehow. But it's finding and, the right amount of grants, honestly, is what it comes down to. So, if I can be of any help, um, yeah, we, okay. we would absolutely appreciate it. And if, if you'd like, there's actually a map on the, on the rear wall there behind uh, uh, mm -hmm. our nice police office uh, that know, details the, the area for the sewer. I'm sure that the firms that you've hired are competent, but maybe there's a possibility of a combination of gravity and low pressure, yeah. you know, because. The gravity system, uh, the low pressure system, more of a pain to the homeowners. They have to add power to it, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you don't have like 40 lives like the gravity system. Yeah. I say, um, and Chuck, keep me honest, a lot of the newer pumps are, are much, much better than they used to be. They're sure. pump, pumps require maintenance. Yeah. That's it's, it's a thing that can know, happen. You have high points in the system, okay. and you have to have air relief air valves, air. then you get. Marble odor. Uh, so there's some downside. A little pressure. Understood. Um, and I apologize. What was your name, sir? Pardon? What was your name? Dave. Uh, Dave Schellenberg. I live down in Stone Claw. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, one of the other things I want to mention, just as an aside, in the, the course of discussing grants with Representative Gosiak, it did come up that there are potentially grants failed for. People that are on fixed incomes or low incomes to help defray the cost of the hookup fee. And that's a specific to those, those demographics. It's not something that would be necessarily everybody, but if you have somebody who's a retiree with Social Security, chances are they'd be certainly eligible for, for grant funding to help pay for that component of it. Yes, sir. Un under, under the low pressure system, yes. Yes. Yeah, the way the way the low pressure system works as opposed to the gravity system, unlike gravity, where gravity is doing the work, you would have a, a small holding tank essentially on your property where if it reaches a certain point, pump kicks on, and it, it puts it into the low pressure system. The low pressure system being essentially always pressurized and being pulled towards its bolt Correct. Yeah, that's the, the difference is about six million dollars in the price tag on the project, <laughs> so that would be something that we could look at if there are grants available to certain demographics of people to help cut that off. But this is again not not wholly different. For example, if you have you have a well pump, you pay for the, the electricity to pump the water out of the ground. The pump dies. I think the potential is about fifty thousand dollars per house. Yeah, which, yeah, right. we're trying. We're chasing. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So there's there's steps you have to take to get to the camp. Well, reasonably, there's there's loans. Yeah, so you you have a, a mix. Yeah, well, that's part of it. So part of it is operation. Part of it is the capital expenditure. So there's three sources of funding for a project like this: cash, credit, grants. The goal here is to have as much grants as possible so that the two remaining components, whether it's the capital expenditure by the, the nature of the township or let's say the connection to Woman's Work or something like that, or what the homeowners have to then finance. We want to keep those two as low as possible for obvious reasons. But again, we'll, uh, just for the, the sake of time, we'll, we'll get into the weeds on this when we have the town hall in for sorted detail. But I want everybody to know that we are we are still fighting the good fight. We're trying to navigate this in a way that isn't going to get us immediately sued or fined to the tune of more than three hundred dollars a day. So there's another grant on here tonight on the agenda. We're looking for just to complete study so that we get the shovel ready. That's another three hundred thousand. That's another three hundred and forty thousand dollars in. No, so the the plan, and we'd be happy to to share with you. Uh, um, um, are we putting up a, a wall? A sort of the answer is no. Um, we are going to be utilizing Walmostore, which was the the agreement that I mentioned earlier. Asked for the, the attorney's update on is we are going to connect Walmostore with the city. It's it's far more cost effective to do that than it is to set up. Not initially. So when we talk to the engineer, and again, we can get into more detail about this later uh, or at the next meeting or town hall, but um, we would have kind of locked in sort of section with the, the sections that are receiving sewer in this phase. And if something additional was needed, we would be able to connect it to there's going to be a pumping station towards where a canal ends at 422, that it could be connected there and Assuming there's enough availability at Walmart, you could add capacity. So there is an opportunity for expansion if necessary, but the, the core focus is the, the affected area under the, the Act 537. So, okay. Um, seeing as we've labored on that for quite a bit, um, Irene or Jim, anything further for Act 537? Okay. Thank you for Thank your offer to help. Yeah, we, we really appreciate it. We appreciate it. The, every every bit of input is always appreciated. Um, next is the proposed well water ordinance. Uh, this was listed as being required by Act 537. However, Hydro Terra spoke to Tim Wagner at P DEP, who clarified that the ordinance is actually not really required to be in the special study. It was just kind of there as part of a standard memo. Um, so if we choose to go forward with that or not is really at our discretion. I was interested in looking at what that would actually entail because I think it might not be a fan of it if it covers something that's not already. That's fair. I know what well, isolation already covered in a different section right. of things. So if there wasn't anything that would be beneficial to us, like if it's not us a uh, water not essentially a water, then I don't think we should put the effort into it where it's not needed. And I had a question asked me today um, if we go ahead with this well ordinance and somebody and we have to dig another well, it's going to be an under three permit. Well, that even without this ordinance, that's happened. already. Yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. Yes. Sir. That's just, this is the whole. Chicken egg scenario argument that he made about systems. If you have an on lot system that fails. But the, the isolation. Well, it runs. Yeah. Most yeah, houses on Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. 
but like yeah. At the meeting with uh, Senator Gephardt, one of the suggestions made that maybe we should buy every other house and tear them down so well, there'd that, be enough that would, room. That wouldn't be enough room. Of course, there. the answer to that was no. Yeah. Aside from being silly, that wouldn't even that wouldn't even get you the hundred feet. Yeah, that that was a suggestion made by Senator. No, I'm not kidding you. That's I have witnesses. That's <laughs> disgusting. Why would you take that off you? Um, yeah, I would take that off you for the next. One. Um, the, the next item, because I'm going to start picking up speed here, is the sewage management program. Uh, we made a motion to authorize Hydro Terra to work with Kozlov Stout and updating and sharing with everybody. I did not see any update there if that's been fully completed, but I did see a draft copy. Okay. Yeah, I saw a draft copy that had some changes in wording. Like, yeah. Once we have it done, that's a very helpful uh, set of materials that explain um, things around system requirements that we have now. Um, really kind of being the, the how to material for if you have to um, Next is the revised on lot sewage disposal system ordinance. Um, this was the ordinance that requires that the uh, on lot systems pumped out at regular interval and the stipulation the SEO had to be the one inspecting it. Um, at last month's meeting, a motion was made to authorize Kozlov Stout to uh, advertise the on lot sewage disposal system ordinance after making the necessary talk about. Um, Colin, did that get advertised as of yet? No, because I wanted to make sure in my discussions with the pages we were making. This amendment. Makes and sense. So there we had some very clear tweaks to the ordinance, but I Okay. Well, I mean that's subject to the necessary corrections, but I'll be happy to make another motion for you. I, I do expect that this ordinance Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize out to advertise the updated uh, we're revised on lot sewage disposal ordinance. And this is 2023 uh, 1. Hi. 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 Okay. So the next item we can't adopt or approve, which is the resolution for sewage management program, which is 2023 6, until we adopt it. Table that item until next time. Uh, next is the 2023 LSA Category 4 program, Berks County grants uh, met with the District Director Daniel Boast from Senator Gebhardt's office on September 15th, and then with Representative Barry Joswiak on September 25th to discuss how they can support us with critical grant funding around completing the design portions of our mandated sewer projects. Uh, we did receive 29 letters of support from residents. 30. Excellent. 30 letters of support from residents and one petition with 56 signatures for a total of 85, 86 signatures. So we appreciate everybody that did put a letter in. This is a huge help for securing grants because it shows support from the community in, in that endeavor. And that actually goes a long way in the grant review process. So as we go after more and more grants, this will be a thing that becomes more and more commonplace. Uh, we do have some standard letters. It's if you feel the need to write one on your own, you absolutely can, but we do have some some standardized things that make it easier where you can simply sign your, your name and, and the date and everything uh, and turn it in. So. Representative Jaws React sent us a letter. Has Senator Gephardt sent us a letter? You got them. Yep. yep. Yeah, so we have those. Like I said, nothing stopping you if you feel the need to write a more involved letter. Absolutely. Don't, don't feel... Any, any reservation or hesitation to do that, but uh, we do have some standard letters to make things easy. Next, uh, actually, the next part of that is we made a motion at Saturday's workshop meeting to review and adopt the revised resolution for that grant, 
which was a grant for 220,000 or a grant request for $220,461. Uh, this was resolution 2020-5. Next, also in the, the flavor of grants is the 2023 LSA statewide PA grant. Um, similar fashion, we met with uh, Daniel Bost from San Senator Gephardt's office and Representative Barry Joswiak about their support. Kimberly DeRosa from Hydra Terrace spoke with the members of the CED about their grant review committee who recommended that we apply for the statewide grant for the first line at the same time in Berks County. It is the same review board and it could actually hurt our chances of getting funding saving two places. Um, what they instead suggested is if we have other needs like emergency management coordinator equipment or things for the police department, that we instead use the statewide grant for those items. Um, so Melissa is going to be prepping that statewide LSA grant uh, in some of the materials that the police department has requested. We will, as I mentioned earlier, be involving the support of our, our local county commissioners. I'm drafting a letter asking for their support around the sewer, funding for the sewer, as well as some other projects and needs that we have in the township. And then we'll be hopefully setting up a face-to-face -face meeting with them sometime in the near future. Um, is, every, is everything okay, Sue? Sue, is everything okay? Okay. Um, next item is, as we mentioned, the town hall. Uh, Joe Baldas from Hydra Terrace suggested that we schedule a meeting during November, which we are working with Conrad Weiser School Districts to preserve the West Elementary. Um, this would only cost us about ten dollars an hour, which is next to nothing. Um, all we have to do is submit the application form and have it approved by the school board. We need we need to know before. Well, we need the school. Oh, oh, anytime. Okay, so I'm not available. Nineteenth of October, so probably thirtieth or thirty-first. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest doing it on. So I would say the week before. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I would say we stay away from Thanksgiving week. So week of the thirteenth or week of the sixth. And I can. Uh, it's far enough out that. Uh. I prefer either the end of the the first full week of November or the week of the first. Because I, I know I've got some some business stuff that I'm going to travel for during the uh, six through the eight. Yeah, but if we can get well, anything, we but we have a we have a conflict right. We might not get there because it's like to say. Um. So again, my preference would be any time during the week of the 13th. And again, that's far out that if I put it on my schedule, I can generally keep things from booking. Oh. Irene, you probably don't have your I work schedule yeah. that far out. Yeah. Well, it's, it's meeting week? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like I said, uh, Thanksgiving was the 25th, 24th. When is Thanksgiving this year? 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, I mean, if we did it early that week, like if we did it on Tuesday, the only concern would be if we have people that travel to. Okay. That's true. I mean, we could do the beginning of the month. The, the concern with the beginning of November is I'm probably not going to be available between the 6th and the 8th. It's, I, I might be. Uh, yeah. So, like, anything the week of the 13th, anything the week of the 20th, or if we do it, like, the 2nd or the 3rd of, of November. Like, those, those dates all work for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't particularly want to do a town hall on a Friday either, but... Uh, no, I'm I'm probably not going to be, yeah. I'd be able to for Tuesday the 4th. Planning for No? 
Like for, okay, so fourteenth maybe, thirteenth or fourteenth would probably be best. What was that called? Not available. Okay, is that a is that a situation where, like, well, yeah, we should have somebody there. But um, is that um, what, are you available potentially on like the fifth? Is that a Wednesday? It's a Wednesday. <laughs> or or just take the calendar down. Yeah. Okay. November is Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can. So with with that said, we've already authorized you to book and advertise the town hall. Do we want to just circulate dates and see what sticks? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, we'll we'll get a, an email going, and one if Colin says like I'm available all these dates, and Jim says I'm available all these dates, I'm available all these dates, and Chuck's available. We'll see what lines up, and that's our date. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send out an email Monday. Thank you. Morning. Thank you. That way we don't beat this particular horse too long. Um, next item on the agenda is the 158 small road thing with the outstanding demolition order. We've already covered that in public comments. So any additional that we need to add to that, I'm going to skip it. The road occupancy permit ordinance amendment. We made a motion at last month's meeting to authorize attorney McFarland to prepare and advertise. Engineer Hess will provide, uh, excuse me, standard details for pavement restoration and the new application form, which will be included as part of the ordinance amendment. Yeah, I did application. Oh, well, it's three details that cover how we want pavement restoration completed temporary permanent basis, also in any area outside of a roadway. It's still within the in the right of way. Um, I did not send them to I'll do that this morning. Then I did have some feedback. I did have some feedback from those two, and I gave some feedback to Colin. Um, so if we have a that work, So the, the, the draft and the standard and updated permit application are ready. Okay. Yeah, we have to approve them. Correct. Left it. Left it. Left it. Good. Um. Why don't Why don't Why don't I get you finished? The exhibit and then you can authorize at the top. Well, your workshop, well, what let's have. Make it a goal of having both of them. Totally right. So we'll we'll go to the motion to get it wrapped up again. Same. Same statement applies for the Yep. Okay, so we'll move on to the rental ordinance, otherwise known as the proposed Airbnb ordinance. We made a motion at last month's meeting to authorize attorney McCormick to prepare the short term rental ordinance draft. Any further ready to do it potentially advertise hopefully. Yep, I'll have a Uh, no, because they're not loaded. Is 
the, oh, the, the, the standalone. The best, the best, the best, oh, okay, yeah. the, best yeah. the best practice is to put rental regulation. Pre-existing. Right, right. I know. I know we have to. Unless you feel strongly about this, on the current, don't that be going through. So it has the ability. No, no, I mean, again, I'll go back to the, the previous statement with the well ordinance. You don't have to burn the capital. It's already covered. Um, yeah. yeah you... Yep. yep. Yeah, I... did, we, did we ever hear back from them about rescheduling the... well, while we're on that topic? I did recently submit that amendment to the Oak County Planning Commission for feedback. I think we're approaching the 30 day deadline soon, so I expect to submit. So, uh, my understanding is that three of the other four. Last night, so I will follow up. I mean, this. that's fine. That's kind of where we were originally at. And then, like six months ago, we went to a meeting and they they all expressed interest. Oh, hey, we should probably do some. That too. That was like if we heard about it because it's just been limbo sort of ever since. Okay, uh, next thing is the rental calling. Um, I did actually sit down and read through the Civic Ready and the OnSolve. Um, there's not any really big hidden gotchas between either, but I think the Civic Ready is the better service out of the two. It also has the benefit of it. So I would say we budget that in for next year. And if we have some funding, Yeah. yeah, what I was saying is we find like whether it's the EMC budget or something like that, put that into, into the bucket where it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well, that, yeah. that, that is a workable yeah. bucket. It's... Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so as long as we have a, a, a fund in which to pay for it, not going yeah. outside the budget, yeah. no. then I'm okay with that. So I, I'll make a motion to move forward with the Civic Ready proposal for the robocalling and I we support how much yeah. on there. Yeah, you can roads closed. Don't go this way. <laughs> yeah. you can get Enforcement action against property owner of 1117 in Boulevard. We had made a motion at last month's meeting to ratify the zoning code in official statute, dumping an IPMC notice of violation to the owner and property. The meeting was made at last month's meeting, or a motion was made at last month's meeting, authorized the solicitor to institute an injunction action against the owner and the occupant of the property if one or both of the notices of violation are. Craft uh, did do an inspection on Friday, September 22nd, and notes that the condition of the property had improved immensely. I'm not saying you drive by it every day. Okay. I didn't. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 However, <laughs> however, uh, junk is still present. They recommend that we have the solicitor proceed with the injunction. That's still one of the cases. Um. So, yeah, at this point, we've already authorized the solicitor to prepare and file the injunction. Nope. 
it is unfortunate that the the kind of progress that was needed was not made because credit as the owner, uh, you did make quite a bit of progress. This lasting it's a lasting There's stuff happening in the side Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it's the reality. You should why should they respond if they never they never close. Yeah. Well sometimes. Every once in a while. I've yeah. never never seen them before. Yeah. Usually have the As long as they're registered, not considered junk. They're a registered. Yeah. Well, if, if they're not registered and not inspected, and you have over a certain amount, then yes, the criteria. And I, I think the the stipulation, most of those things are constitute a, a junk. Um, what about the storm? <laughs> yeah, they're they, since are they, since he's taking up so much. In uh, moving right along, uh, Stonecroft <laughs> Village deed for open space lot two fifteen. Um, I don't know that we have heard any. Heard it. Heard anything known about the uh misdeeded lot fifteen? Have any about one of which was the unfortunate effectively have to HOA in order to rectify the thing they want to do. Um, is there any? So the developer. The wild um, best easiest way to do developer for we have to do to pursue the special preparation. If uh, we would just as well, and I have it that with the HOA by the gentleman who could very fast to read from the developer's attorney, is that correct? Perfect. Yeah, so we're just to work with the HOA. Okay, I would be, I had reached out to contact. And more. Disrupting it. Being very approachable. Ever. I, I had reached out to the service where they did it. The fire that they felt appropriate. Maybe what the record is. I heard back. Dedicated document. That was confusing. 
if the board wants me to prepare it, please make a presentation for why I'm happy to do it. You can also call council on landmarks again. However, I've discussed this issue with them at least two or three times. And I haven't really made any headway. Do you think preparing the deed will resolve the situation? Just say it's done, it's in front of them, okay, then we can move forward. It. Probably, and it wouldn't take wouldn't take long for you to do that. It's tough to actually the legal permit. Yeah, we, have, we have the legal. Uh, you know, it's the exhibit that was utilized um, when it was conveyed from Landmark to the HOA. Tell you what, what? Touch base next week. I'll, I'll make a call just to see if I can land. Okay. Maybe you should call their attorney and tell them that if he would prefer, we'll work with the HOA and we'll send him a bill for the services that are provided to get this call. That works with me. You still have the ability to, to bill for professional fees under the improvements. Right. Right? So they can either correct it or we'll yep. bill it for professional fees and we'll do that. Yep. Yeah, like call, I think they should work. Yeah. I would guess that would we we had some good five ten minute conversations, but we never talked. Oh. Thank you, Colin. Sure. You okay? Yeah. On to the next agenda. Yeah, go ahead. John, you want to come up? You're next on the agenda. So we have the emergency management coordinator report. Um I'll just let John talk. <laughs> Can you know? Yeah, grab the microphone. Were you going to? Did you have to move over? You or you have a clicker to advance it? Okay. Is is this power? Can we have the PowerPoint as something that the public can view at a later time? He did all that. Oh, okay. So that's even nicer. It's still working. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll work. Yeah. I just thought we had discussed that a couple of years ago. Yeah. We had. We never really went. Well, I had a design for the Marion with the turtle shell with a little bit of the rescue helmet on it and stuff. Emergency management on a turtle shell. You can't even ninja turtle. Before I get to that, I have the report. You guys want that? Do whatever you think you want to do. Whatever you want to talk about first. Well, at the the workshop when we we're talking about the to make sure the training package for the township for the fire department stuff for next year. Um, we Swap need to go over the those. Microphone. The microphone's right here. I'm not swapping it. <laughs> Um, do we need to go over those items that I have re I requested that we purchase? Yes, please right. go over that. Well, that's the right that's 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 We can't tell you to okay. talk about it right now. Okay, oh, let's I got do a double note. Okay. Um, I gave it's in front of Melissa. I finally received my advanced certification from FEMA. Or no EMC. Issues. Yeah, they gave me a nice plaque. I dropped it, broke the corner off of it. But... Seriously? Yeah. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you. I've been actually I figured out earlier about 500 hours to get. Um. Pardon? Yeah, that that is your copy. My file. Sue's file. So, so the the PowerPoint that I did here. Um. His questions have been brought up on basically what we do, why we do, and I'm going to speak about our drone. Um, oh, well, why is this not working? Is it, uh... There you go.
Okay. So that screen that is now, that screen that is white is had the explanation under Title 35 and I had the section, which I remember right now, as far as all political subdivisions in Pennsylvania have to have an emergency management agency, EMC, et cetera, et cetera, and why we do what we do, which was looked very nice. So we'll just go to some pictures. Um, some of the things that we have done, and still there, he'll, re he'll remember some of these. Um, but when we had to shut 422 down as EMA, we had uh, Womelsdorf um, fire police came up. And then the picture on the right for that Carmen Ford. Like he was very happy that day. Um, that's sarcasm. Um, with again some of the stuff that we're doing as far as going out as emergency management system, the police department, whatever they basically whatever they call us and when we're going to do. Um, that was the incident we were down for. That was the trees actually hanging in live wires because we were power outage and what. And four twenty two again, and I got Butch sleeveless short. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's like where's Waldo? Here's which. Yeah. Um, some of the places I've been representing Marion as EMC. This is the uh, Palmer explosion down in West Reading. And yes, we are smiling because some old friends I haven't seen in years, but that was a pretty big deal. I was called down basically to help with paperwork on the incident. I had to think. Um, a few more. The actual scene. And then supposed to be writing at the top of that on our debris and damage assessment. Just a few pictures of the last uh, two or so years, some of the uh, responsibility that I go out as for damage assessment reporting to the county. And we ha have to meticulously and understand. About two years ago, three years ago, when I first started with this, some of the paperwork I have to do to the county really wasn't, they care less about the photo. I was in training literally yesterday up at county and everything is migrating everything is in photos um, i guess we already have ipads to be able to use for it well really no major expense the whole new program the county is going to be going through. but this is just some of the stuff that i have to go out and do and if we don't do it it does not add to the big collective of the county getting disaster money and for us one of the most important things took it upon itself as a merchant man that any of the roads, culverts, bridges, anything like that, uh, I'm, I'm, I've been going out and getting photos as far as from camera as well as the drone before and then hopefully after. Um, but we have got to document the document condition of our culvert roads and everything well before an incident when a disaster does happen and we show that there was damage to those ways, culverts and what then we can put in for funding for repair and replacement. Because if we just have something now that, oh, it was damaged, there's no proof. Trust me, FEMA is not able to do anything. Um, there's a lot of is it, is it showing up on yours? So we've had that we've had a lot of drama here recently. The drone, um, and in, Wait, just to clarify, you're not the only person. In no, Mary I've County actually been able to get drone. online and some of the drone groups and whatnot. I've been able to count um, unofficially at least 25 between the end of town and Wolmelsdorf. And I know some of the Wolmelsdorf pilots do fly out over our area. Um, but I do have, there was a new mandate under the FAA on September 15th. All legal drones have to transmit the registration. Ours is legal. I have the letter and everything. I have laminated and I keep in, in my case with it. Our, hel our helicopter. Um, 
our drone is compliant to all the current FAA standards, any rules, anything like that. That, um, uh, well, why we have it, real-time information covers large swaths of area that we can't otherwise cover. Search and rescue operations, which it has been used, law enforcement, search ops, which uh, Ludwig was on the last one I was just on. Um, Post-disaster damage survey and assessment from safe areas. And that was originally why I asked to get being by myself and going out in knee to mid thigh mud occasion and then finding trees with power lines. But um, just big big thing I'm trying to work on right now is we're going to dock three and put it in. I put this. That's what I've been doing. Yes. Um, and what's been great everywhere I've been going out to, the neighbors to right location, they're they're finding it. I had one guy. I'm like, this is just, you know, we, I'm probably there for 20 minutes. And the guy, once I explain what we're doing, because that's great, you know, being proactive. But, not, um, but you see, I, I have the UAS certificate of registration. We're good until 20, or, yeah, December 25. There's another little thing there. Um, so just Marion Drive, I have a bunch of the before pictures and after. This is just beautiful. Um, and I have a lot of pictures and videos I didn't put in here because I didn't want this to be an hour where I can actually fly down into the entrances of the culverts. I'm checking debris, anything that's in there, because then if we do find debris and whatnot, we got to remove it. Um, another really interesting one, Sharps Bridge, um, which I love history. I'm a history buff to say the least, but built in 1903, rebuilt in 1906. If my math is, as of now, it's 73 years since it was last on, shall we say, and flying around this, um, it's we have some pretty significant deterioration. Is that a township? Uh, no. That's uh, that's county. It's not our. Good. Good. Not our. That's very good. And that's the thing is, we have to go out, document, look at this stuff, and then get it to where it happens. Um, we can't bury our head. One location, I not climbing down and get it, get around them. And we, there's some, there's some issues. Yeah. 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 I got the information yesterday okay. when I was training up the county. Okay. This is the dam that's on the south side of it. I'm still trying to establish basically who actually owns that dam because it was part of. And it's really neat. Again, I love the history of it. that sawmill that was built. They, Late 30s, early 40s, 1940s, and there was a huge sawmill there, and that was the inlet for it for the water wheel and everything. But this is also a choke point when it comes to debris, and that brought up another little thing when we, when we spoke on the work meeting on where trying to get with the other townships around us to create a debris management program that at an incident we can't create. Well, I hope not. We couldn't create enough debris to meet the threshold for reimbursement. And then where we're going to put all this material, you know, it can only go on the township owned property and really not to have to fill the field with trees and everything like that until it gets recollected. But another thing on drones, the scene size up for emergency scenes. This was the tanker crash um, at the end of uh, township here earlier this year. And again, being able to assess things from above. And this will be a, a training photo I will use with the fire department when we meet. Um, not going to get into it now, but then another, we, we did a training session jointly. Um, this was in Wormelsdorf, Wormelsdorf, Robzonia, Marion, Newmanstown. One other department. But for us in command, anything like that, we're trying to run an incident. This is what we get to see is that actual view. That's what we're looking at. We're not getting a 360. So being able to get up, get the drone up at 100 feet or so, and I can stand next to an officer in charge and show them what they can't see. And as far as raising our level of safety, it's through the roof in a good way. Um, you know, seeing angles that they can't see because most, you know, the command is really supposed to be moving around, staying in a single area. So these are like a minute or two. 
and I was really hoping some people would be here tonight. But this was this was a great night when Officer Ludwig came to my neighborhood. Um, when someone said drone that I was training with in the, the confines of my property lines, which there's my little wedge of property, that somebody said down here I was flying over them. We weren't because every single flight we do is logged off of GPS mapping, and this is what the system can't delete it. Here it is. I actually gave the police department our program, the password, everything that I have, they can gain access to whenever they want. Because other times I've the chief or um, Officer Ludwig would I might get a call. Are you flying your drone right now? Nope, not flying it. Like one I was in upstate PA or I was in Philadelphia, well, somebody's flying a drone. I said, There's more drones. And they they're they're cool enough to ask me because hey, it's him again. No, it's not me. But again, another flight, another flight. Never leaving the property, but I'm flying over those people's houses, according to me, which I haven't. This was the police search with, uh, I think you were staging on what? Yeah. This was, again, we're getting called to assist other agencies. This is a regional asset because we have to keep call everybody else for pretty much everything we need help with. So it's nice to be able to offer a little bit of help back to people around us. I'm not going to get into the detail, but when I'm when I was there and I have officers on either side of me with their AR and M4 out, finding out what the subject they were looking for in the circumstances, um, which I had my best with. But we're getting called out to help with this stuff. I actually had to call Western Burke's fire to assist because they they have thermal imaging capability. And that really made a big difference on it. But I pretty much didn't say anymore. Go on and ask. He can tell. Um, now, this is this. Is, Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right. So probably the first or second week in November, I'm currently in a part 107 class. That is the main level certification for drone drone pilots. I will actually have a commercial pilot's license at that point, which is frightening in many ways. Um, but in a nutshell, we can fly up to 400 feet. I have visual line of sight up to three miles is where I can fly from whatever location I'm at. I've added extra strobes to our drone. You cannot miss it in the air. Um, we have to have them for dusk, dawn, night operations. But my opinion, unless police don't want the strobes on for obvious reasons, every time I put the, up, the drone up, I have the, the strobes on. And it's, it's there's no hiding. There's nothing like that. Um, so yes, drones can fly over your house or property. The FAA controls all airspace or NAS, national airspace. Um, and one of the things I'll explain is fly over versus sustain flight. If you're, let's say you're having a party outside or they always, the question is, well, if I'm sun tanning on my deck, you can fly over. You can't do a sustained flight over people unless they are involved in the operation or party that you're in. So during a search and rescue operation, yes, we can fly over our rescuers but I can't fly over somebody's party. I can fly over, but not sustained stationary flight over. Um, this way, again, I was hoping somebody was gonna be here, but no, you cannot shoot at or threaten to shoot down a drone. All unmanned aircraft are covered under Title 18 of the US Code 32, punishable by up to 20 years in prison and significant fines. That all unmanned aircraft are considered like any other aircraft. And July 4th, I did have it up because I wanted to see honestly what was going on. And somebody up on William Penn was shining uh, strobe lights and lasers at the drone. That is another criminal offense. Um, and I know the house and I hope to speak to the individual at some point. So Communications Act 1934 outlaws any form of interference with radio transmission. So jamming is a criminal offense. Um, and you cannot point spotlights or lasers at any aircraft, including the drones. So we've had that experience. And again, I agree. I was one of the people years ago when it came to drones, oh, that I don't want it. The drone, if they're if they're flying, if they're at your window level, call the police. That is illegal. Um, we will not be doing that unless that's on a police operation for search and rescue, not for surveillance. We can't do surveillance. Um, the police have there's a lot of lot more rules for them with, as far as their warrant that they have to get. Um, but for us, it's search and rescue. It's damage assessment. 
Now, once I do get the part 107 certification, there is a several additional things we can add to the drone operations here, which that'll be a surprise later, um, which is gonna be very good on code enforcement, shall we say. Um, but because current code enforcement, they're already using drones now. So I know realtors in the area have been using drones and they have to, they have to, because they're, they're making money at it. Um, they have to have a 107 certification, but I'm not paid to do anything that I'm doing here, but, um, different, uh, PPNL, med ed, they have drone plans. Um, obviously law enforcement has, has drones, not at least I don't really know of anybody around here other than PSP, which they used extensively on that last search, but. Um, there are a lot of drones in our township that we have no control over, but they can legally fly over homes. They can fly over your property. It's, it is legal. You know, they can technically be about six inches over your roof. You know, you don't own the airspace above your home. Yeah. Um, so if somebody the drone crashes and causes damage to that them. instantly has to be reported to the FAA and NTSB. If there's any property damage, will be investigated. Um, that's why there's another reason I'm not flying over people. because you're, you're, if There's a, a lot of criteria on the propellers. If the props are at a certain speed, weight, if damage due to somebody's skin, whatever. Just trust me, book, book um, inch and a half thick just for a 60 question test. Um, I have to be able to learn how I'm landing in the airport. I'm not a Zero and FAA, fly a drone. Technically, be able to fly a plane. Not actually the plane, but the, the rules to fly it. Up. How to fly it? What? Nothing. What? Nothing. No. Um, but I did one of the grants that I did uh, pat or hand in for an upgrade that we could never afford. It. But the amount of all and requests for this drone has really surprised me a lot. I can't, I can't do that. If it's an emergency situation, yeah. I mean, some of the other things I've been asked to do, not until I have my Part 107 certification, um, which will open up a grant we did put in for, is for one of the thermal imaging drones. I duplicated with the City of Reading Fire Department. Now. They have two of them. They have thermal imaging capability. It's not to the extent of like Western Berks is because there's 30,000 plus. But when I think we're around, 8,000 something. But again, we're not paying for it if we can get it. But that thermal imaging, that's huge. Like for that, if the call is going out to law enforcement. And then when we had one of the gentlemen that was hiding down here in the cornfield, he walked away. And fortunately, the other search fell asleep at somebody's house. But any of that, we can use it. And it's a huge asset. It's going to be fire, search and rescue, everything else. What's that? I thought you said Sasquatch. A friend invited me to come to you. Um, all right. So as I say, question period after the meeting. The bosses here have any questions, right? Um, Senator Gibbs, uh, yes, huh. fly over township. Well, if, if I have permission to fly, which I've given myself permission to fly over. John, as I mentioned it. No. Just EMCs that I help someplace else that I call every time I had an incident, I call him for help. He's, I could not physically find a road to get over. I found an hour and a half from my house, I was able to get into the city of Reading, but couldn't get from Reading into Muhlenberg. And that was, again, that's been a big thing as the, uh, 
is grown. It's a huge asset. It's really, it's really not out a lot, especially if we can get the, you know, if we get the grant for thermal imaging. Um, other than my time, and again, I don't put in for my time or training. And like I said, the 500 hours to get that, that's done on me. Other than yes, and to clarify, yes, I have got reimbursed for some hotel stays out of the area and I think some meals. But total of five dollars was out of your budget here, and that was it. Training them. And I do, I do have state conference up in two weeks. I'll be out in Blair County. That's be nice in a couple of stadium. Thank, thank you for everything that you do, John. We really do yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, the next agenda item is also related to the EMC and it's the purchase of some equipment and supplies. Uh, we're looking to get one rescue vest for a cost of $254.95. Signs totaling $890.50. A generator with fuel for $1,318.98 for a grand total of $2,000. Four hundred and seventy-four dollars three cents. Uh, I'll make a motion to authorize the purchase of the EMC equipment and supplies listed. Aye. 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 Okay. Should be noted that that's in this budget. That yeah. that is within the budget. Yeah, that's not a unapproved. Uh, next is the Creekview Dairy Operations Nine. Route 419. Uh, Engineer Hess has issued a second review letter as of September 7th. Two minor changes will be incorporated into the as built plan to address the requirements of the NPDF notice of termination. BCC did, BCCD did an inspection on August 22nd, and we are still just awaiting that. The letter of credit balance is currently $40,222.88. No action, no further action needed at this time. In years, yeah. and that worked pretty well. Trying to conservation is they need it. There's no sense of doing both kind of on changing simultaneously the benefit of the. So I would expect at some point here, I'll realize they still have financial security. Okay. Very good. Next, Colbert related site improvements on Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, as well as the paving guide rail. Riker. Uh, everything is completed except for guide rails. Guide rails are completed. Guide Excellent. 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 Restoration paid. Yeah. Um, they do up to pay up. Did was that? Um, also related to some things with the guide rails, uh, we had made the request to see about quote for a section of Ballinger Road, Hickory Road, and William Penn Boulevard. Um, you get a chance to contact Charlie. I, okay. Okay. But I'm being, Ballinger Road. That's what builds. Yeah. Yeah. And I know William Penn Boulevard. There's a section that's rail close. Right. What I was waiting for. Was so when you Okay. That's where we put a patch. Oh, gotcha. And the 
So you can oh, at, at the cemetery. Is that here? Yeah, to the board. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. There are two something there. Yeah, I think there's two. Okay. It is like, yeah, it's like, yep. So, like, Following your well, yeah, but do you so think the other two will be? Well, we'll, and... well, it's only a, a couple on the very end. We're not talking about replacing the whole thing. It's just oh, okay. Yeah. I, think, I was oh, thinking of the rough. Yeah, yeah. The trails are yeah. missing. Yeah. Now, did you have a? Yeah. Watching that. So. Question this get a quote behind yeah. your private work. No, we have done. Okay. okay. So if you get a quote and you got that, then here we go. So, okay. Uh, Feedback from somebody on the Zoom. Uh, Chuck, if you move the microphone a little further, oh. cutting it out that it's your part the way that it's not. Got it. Thank you. So then, William Penn being the first priority, Hickory Road being the second, and then we'll see how things work out on falling or. And we have to. Got it. Do we need a pre approval? What will happen is I will have. To, uh, submit to Charlie. Well, you, you should get three quotes. So I submit the three quotes as long as the you know the amount goes under the bidding threshold, public bidding threshold, uh, then it, it will be. All right. okay. uh, Dave. David Stavik, Sports Road. Concerning your guardrail on Penn, the Will Marion Rock. We tried to get a grant for that red light grant mm. back in the day. Failed. However, two things: there's a gas line going under those, which you will Ooh. in your your yeah. eight one one call. Yeah, you determine Wait, that. It's like right under. However, uh, concerning uh, vehicles, when I was plowing snow for the past years, I have cars out of there mm. that did go out there. And the only reason they didn't go into the side was because the snow banked up there. But that is a hazard when it gets icy. Okay. That's the way that comes up. So that is a yeah a problem area that should yeah. be taken yeah. care of for vehicular safety. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And yeah. if we get the speed over yeah. the yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. I don't think it applies in anyhow. But yeah. it looks like it. So my question would be, Dave, hey, was there any plan available? Anything that would show that gap line guide rail and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good to know. Because cost current cost of guide rail that we're experiencing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot a lot more than that a now. More now. Yeah. Um it looks yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, appreciate it. So I I will look at and do an evaluation based on paying all the project oh and see where that threshold wow. is. Maybe we this year. Okay. 
I I would say yeah. Um, there's the red. There's the red light. Yeah. Oh, it would be eligible for both of them. Yeah. So, how about a price cost? First one we're putting for first one has the uh act by Yeah. So if we can let's maybe put the police stuff in on the Birch one. And then <laughs> what? Oh, okay, we're well, fine. The stuff they one all die. Yeah, we got a little bit. Yeah, have Chuck get the. Yeah. No, that's that's the state. That's the state. state. We don't have one. Yeah. Okay, so we muddy the water. Yeah. Yeah, for too much. Yeah. yeah. And state one front. And, and later, maybe we can plan for that. Worst thing that happens yeah. is they, the uh, best thing that would happen is they give us a grant, but worst case scenario is they give us two and then say, again, we're not doing the guy. Okay. Um, also, in that same vein of things, the temporary construction easements and permanent drain easements for culvert replacements. Um, you have seven out of the eight of them. <laughs> yep, the eight. I have. You have all eight. 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 Here, out of Thank you, Chuck. Okay. So each of these need. Signed by way to set up chairman or the supervisor. Um, and then it has to be notarized. Once that is completed, and you over the computer, and you can see the recorded, and that will enable access into the culverts. Um, and if we cover where the culvert then a little bit outside of So I'm happy. All done and the secretary chairman notary finally executed. Guard them with your life. I'm surprised there's not a lot of blood in there, but and actually Peter in that paperwork. But um no most most everyone is very very to the request to grant access to those calls. I assume Peter has to be Yes. yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, no, noted. Say, noted, and I'll take that up with our solicitor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to authorize the board chairman to sign the temporary construction and permanent drainage easement. Second. Hi. Okay. I will be skipping the next two items, which are the relating to Bollinger Road, uh, as we will be doing an executive session at the end of this meeting around the possible litigation that stems from those. Uh, so we'll move on to item 25, which is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, engineer has, has suggested uh, we have both of prepare a draft document to solicit these quotes. Uh, for Attorney McFarland's review. Anything over 22500 would need to be put out publicly to bid. Uh, he also needs to coordinate with the UGI and the property owners around this. Yeah, just an update on that. So, and we're trying to... Twenty thousand. 
put in typical public works contract require bid box performance bonds and things of that nature that contract provides but it costs money to the bid trying to do a scale back many local package like township insurances yell white Handling it back. The turn is if you get close, you have to have one of the not, you know, we yeah. can't accept any of the actions did it. So because it's so tight, that's where we're at and the next document get a blessing to before um we start to approach various not have to I mean even the advertising that's a couple of probably um that it really ties your hands and spends money where you don't need to for smaller projects. Uh, yes. the other one part of that too is obviously UGI when in contact with UGI share with them our plan obtain their plans for where their gas main is make sure everybody's going to be happy and parallel to the gas main close to the um, it can be done make sure that everybody works with that yep. and property owners too um, but we are ready to here So, all the that. so even though that's handy, trying to put those things, I don't want to spend ten thousand dollars in engineering and bidding documents and all this. Ten thousand dollars, huh? Um, you know, this is one of those full time staff. Money, cost for the material, stone, paving, what have you, all be covered under liquid fuels fund, uh, which would extend much further. That's the capability right now, but in a later agenda. Anyhow, that's, that's the approach. Thank you. I assume the board would like to see. Yeah. Anything's possible. What's your question? I tend to find it pretty confident that here. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the John Tower. Uh, on that, just like that. Um, market push is to go upwards of thousand dollars maintenance. Um, we obviously just got that. It's an investment. I'll make a motion to authorize the lower maintenance. Um, Based on up to one thousand dollars in cost around the boom hour. Aye. Aye. Directors. Yeah. It works. It works. Last. Next is the Martin Landscape Permit. Uh, this is for three limbs and etc. It's twenty five dollars through December sixty uh, for through December thirty first. Um, first that I've seen this. Anyways. We did. Okay. Okay. 
it's not ringing any bells for me. What? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm two years is one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. yes that's ringing a bell. Put a fine point on it because I just don't know this obviously. Um, this is something for basically sixty bucks a year. Any matter have the matter how there and I'll take it. Probably. Yeah. yeah. But rather than us, if we have a whole tree go down, like, what are we doing with all the wood? We can just take it and dump it there and it's their problem. Okay. I think we John may have something to say yeah. about the open burning. Yeah. Um I'm I'm okay with this, so I'll make a motion to uh the opt in or the art landscape permit for sixty dollars. Hi. Okay, next is the building demolition proposal for the building. Uh, the secretary returned the signed proposal to the all design group. We haven't been back yet about getting on their schedule, uh, but we'll keep a close eye on that as soon as they get engaged with us to work on them. Uh, next is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we have a draft agreement. Uh, we will be authorized to advertise at a public hearing. Um, the only question, uh, Colin, that we had was it looked like the percentage rate that's in that the new agreement went down from like five percent like went down to three. Um, I have. To yeah. To okay. So I would say let's. So since Irene yeah. hasn't had a chance to read it in depth mm -hmm. and. We obviously want Colin to take a crack at it too. Um, I'll table that for next Absolutely. month's item because yeah. I, I want to make sure that we're we're not agreeing to something that we had our day. Yeah. I when I last looked at the law, my understanding was that the county was five. Right. Yeah. And I think that we had been getting previously. Yeah. So we want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. We want to we want to make sure that we have yeah, we want to read through that and go back to uh, uh, um, I, I mean I, whatever emails we can to get back and forth. So yeah. Yeah. So we should re engage we should read it. Yeah, read I'm gonna read through, through it and then read them if they might have been just a typographical error. Or what I what I yeah. mentioned in the workshop, maybe they've added in that already yeah. included that so the percentage is lower. You gotta you gotta read clarify it. what it all Next the Western First Joint uh, Joint Zoning Board Section four oh three amendment. As we mentioned, uh, we have not heard back in the meeting as we scheduled. Um, we have also sent notice about our possible interest for Temporary short term rentals, Airbnb, et cetera, be added to the agenda. Uh, based on what we said earlier, it may not be worth it. Just to see what the zoning have to say on that. Um, yes. Yeah. So, Jim, I can, I can sidebar with you on the explanation on that bottom line. So, the zoning standpoint, you get on the scale. Things like that, and we also have to leverage uh, the joint zoning agreement if somebody has it. So even the zoning is not specifically restricted or prohibited, um, but when you're in a joint agreement like that, somebody has an area that for that you can leverage that and say. That's the big utility is to have a, a much broader area which you leverage. There should be, in my mind, these quarters. I I don't like the the delay, but there there are some very small and. Little, 
So I, I don't, I won't argue with you for a second on that one. I don't like how long it's taking, but there are, are some good things. You don't want to throw the baby out. So, I've got, a, I got a million of these, Irene. I love it. Um, I love it. Next is the 112 Ford Road to the repository bid acknowledgement form. This must be accepted or rejected. Um, it's essentially half of the, the outstanding tax, $500, something like that. Um, I, I say we accept, accept it. it. We get what we can for it. Close the books on it. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we need to talk amend it. Yeah, right. talk workshop. Just take it, scratch it out, or throw it in my name over. Sign it as the, as the chairman. I will make a motion to accept the 112 Ford Road Municipal Repository bid form uh, based on the uh, correction made, in, made to the form with my name as the board chairman listed. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay, the next thing is the advertisement through an assistant secretary positions. One Need. Um, I'll be read Melissa's document on that. But so what what I would actually like to do is, based on board member feedback, I would like to authorize the secretaries to publish the positions on Indeed subject to. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we'll we'll go over that. Uh, I have wow. no doubt that it's it's fantastically fit for purpose. But, uh, in case we have any, we make them. If if this is a yeah, it would be a, I, a different conversation. I honestly yeah. wish we had that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I was gonna say it's 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 gonna be cold outside tonight. Dave. That was not that was not wise. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, next up on the agenda, because we're, we're on the home stretch, people. Um, 2023 Volunteer Fire Relief Association Fund is annual funding to get the Auditor General. We received this uh, September 21st, 2023, to the tune of $14,018.00. Actual Five requires us to give these funds to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association. 60 days and complete form 706B. A motion was made at Saturday's job meeting to authorize the disbursement of the funds. 706. It gets taken care of, don't worry. Yeah, as, as a follow up on that, I still would like to try to have a, a discussion with the fire department at some point, whether it's one of our meetings, one of their meetings, but I'd like to try to get an inroad there to have better communication and have them start satisfying legal requirements around reporting that they do not currently satisfy. So, next is the stormwater management ordinance fees update. That is a that is a huge item on its own. So I'm going to table that one. If I hear sending opinions, we can be here in the morning. Uh, but if not, no, keep keep it on, keep it on. I don't want to lose sight of it. But um, that's going to be if we get chucked to a workshop. That is going to be best suited for a workshop. This. Uh, Chuck, I don't, I don't need to. Oh, but yeah, what I'd like to do is give you a draft document to be able to review a value that help sit around break. Yeah. Well, one of the things that concerned me the most about this is like none of us are stormwater engineers, so like we don't know what fee is what and what. It's supposed to be. This is where we would need your your input as an engineer to say, like, yeah, this one makes sense for you guys. This one doesn't. This is the kind of cost that we've seen historically. This is the kind of cost our firm recommends when we do this kind of work. 
Like that's that's the kind of input we're looking at because it's all Greek. Well, and I think let's get a tally going too. Probably. <laughs> We yeah, want to simplify. I, yeah. I can start working. Get some key sketch. Four more. And strip from run it there. Back. <laughs> I I didn't like announce that publicly that yet. Uh, next item is the 2024 proposed budget. Um, I need still need everybody's uh, items to be incorporated into the budget, and then I'll do some hard number crunching in advance of next month's workshop meeting. Um, I mentioned to Sue. Yes. So you need something for PDF population. Let me actually see if there's a Microsoft product that will do that. Because Microsoft take market share away from me the past couple of years. Um, I'll get the G1 license. Vendor up if you want this. Yeah. I'll, like two days I'll, ago. I'll be picky, but um, there may be something that's already included in that one license that we're getting that we can even use. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or blue. Blue, blue beam's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's some stuff that I can show you guys. New secretary, way broader. Talk about it afterwards. There's a lot of really neat stuff that might be able to get market share away. Uh, so yes, we're gonna conclude the meeting. We're technically going to adjourn for a little bit because of the executive Recess. session, and then we will. Uh, going to do the comments now. Uh, well, yeah. So for everybody in the audience, everybody on Zoom. Uh, we are going to go through the supervisor's comments real quick, and then we'll ask everybody to leave so that we can have the closed door session. Um, I don't have any additional comments other than I don't know if I saw the Dutch Valley contact information for the South Dutch Ball Field. If you sent that to me, it's okay. Okay, no, it's okay. I just want to make sure that it stays on your on your radar. If you can... Okay, so that's the only thing. Um, Irene? I have two questions. If I could direct them towards one. Um, one question is with our new hires, is there any way we can do that? What process do we have to do that? You can. Well, you, I know you, there's apps use, but well, is there anything else or should do? Uh, I just want to make sure that. Yeah, um, honestly, that's for our hiring yeah, process. Our hiring. But, you know, so uh, the next question I have is actually something John referenced during the workshop meeting. He had talked about the disaster and uh, talking about a joint agreement between us and the other agencies you were talking about. Without yeah. killing Dave with the chair, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we mentioned her about debris management on weekends. Yeah. Um, jointly, if we have wind map or ice or something, we wanted to talk about Copahawk, Heidelberg, or North Heidelberg, or North Heidelberg, and even talk about Creek, Richland, honestly. 
got a big enough incident, we might be going over there to help them and vice versa. But then it's all like for that reimbursement at FEMA and FEMA on where, who's got what, where can we take everything? Because right now, the only place we got a parking lot is the baseball field. Well, that was, just brought that up before, and I'm thinking, I got to check on that because where the contract, whether it's mem memorandum of understanding or whatever we have, as long as we can't have the first the whole 16 hour class. Um, I, I, I the instructor. So to be like, potentially eligible for a grant, we'd have to like stage it here and then take yes. it to market. And that's what like, the disposal, recycling, all that stuff. With, but with we're talking about the contract like on that incident, if that's what we have set up beforehand. But I don't know if it's one like, yeah, yeah, I don't think there's up here in seven or five. Right. But what, but what you're saying is if there's a large event, we have enough free, we may get something reimbursed through, yeah, but that's where. Team or team. It, I have no idea what we have to do. us. We have to have set hours coming in. There has to be somebody inspecting the before and after because there's been on some of the hurricanes down south, there's yeah. been company private contractors that were hired, kept driving around in a circle and nobody was checking. Yeah. And they thought they're they're so dumping everything. Basically, a lot of I guess I don't want if you could get the information to come over what the requirements are. I guess the question I had, um, can you help John um, to develop an agreement between these different I'll municipalities? Shoot email to the guy at the yeah. Between again, these we're, municipalities we're in the event that there is such a um, event and they need to have placement of this stuff. But if, if I could ask John to organize this and see which other municipalities participate in this would essentially be an intergovernmental agreement for the public story of. I'm pretty sure no anywhere around here. They collect it, they take care of it, but it's like not seeking that reimbursement on that recovery. If you're in the township, it's yes, that's where dreams of actually having a certain piece of town made up of. They're going out and doing collection on a small scale, helping road crew. But you just get the road to step for primary ESF one, emergency support function one, is that transportation. Open which is here. How important it is on the management side. We got to get the roads up. Get the roads open. Open fire EM. Getting the roads open. Ah, we've had the the ice events before. In 2011, the ice South Heidelberg, we couldn't get off the mountain for four days. There, there was no moving whatsoever. SF1 failed pretty quickly. We just didn't have the vehicle. The National Guard came in and right couldn't make it. So, or not. Yep. Right. I think whenever. So much time. You're appreciated. Like I said the other day, I think we have to double your pay. I think we have a triple. Since <laughs> since you make nothing, I think that's appropriate. But, but it's just amazing true, the amount of time that I got you that put in, working. the cost that you've endured wow. for some of the permits, and I think everybody should know. It. I know yeah. he enjoys it, but yeah. But this is right up his alley. It's very much appreciated. Yeah. yeah. If you want, we can make him a page on the website. You should. Yeah, we can make him. We can make him a page. Let me her. Oh. Okay. You can. Yeah. You can work with uh, 
with Melissa or with Civic or on, Josh. <laughs> or Josh <laughs> on putting up a page on our website. We have the web space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we didn't get a summer newsletter out with the newsletter. I guess we'll have to go to the next meeting. We wanted to include a mailer to all the residents. Please provide us with such and such information with a card that they can mail back to us if they want to be no. No. <laughs> well, yes, but we wanted to have a mailer card. Stop. Let me talk already. Um, we want to have a mailer card so that they could return it to us so that we have a catalog, their address, the phone number, et cetera, so they could be included in the robocall. So we'll work on that for our next meeting and hopefully have that like a prototype so we could both load the letter as well as the uh card. Yeah. And we could get them from it. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. would we would have them we would have a pre printed card name, address, etc. Would you like to be contacted? Yes, yes, no, no, whatever. Please mail this back with the return envelope, but I'm not stamping it just in case they don't. And this way it's, it's mailed to the residents. They have everything they just have to stick a stamp on it, mail it back to us. Well, I'll we'll get a put it in an envelope. Exactly. With the yeah. envelope already pre addressed back to the township in this way. We could do that. And we know roughly know how many uh mail mailings we have to put out so we can get an estimate from uh the JDM and Little Mountain Printing, mm -hmm. so we know how much it is. Oh, yeah. it's okay. That's okay. Chuck, do, do you have any further comments? Um, nothing. Melissa? Nope. Okay. Well, uh, we'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting for okay, Larry. Yes, but we're not. We're not. Yes. The signs. The signs need. The signs are just moved to the side of the road. They should have been turned to orientate away from the road. The road is open. Guide rails in and safe. But, well, you, you pick them up. Somebody may come over. Oh, them. <laughs> no, they, the signs are provided through the contractor for the project. If the subcontractor provides the signs, they'll be coming to pick them up sooner or later. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, that's. I was going to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn following executive session. Okay. Um. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting following our executive session. The time is now nine twenty-two p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.